In this video, I am going to explain to you one of the very important topic in networking that is voice VLAN, voice over IP. And I am going to explain to you how Cisco has implemented voice VLAN and how voice VLAN work together with the data VLAN when you need to connect your computer using an IP phone to the Cisco switch. Basically, Cisco kind of bent their rule between access port versus trunk port when it comes to voice VLAN. They said if you put a statement such as switch port access voice VLAN on a port, that port can carry two VLAN, which is your data VLAN and the voice VLAN. But they claim that port still an access port. That is not a trunk port. So let me show you the Cisco documentation this is a Cisco documentation on configuring voice VLAN. And if you go to search trunk, it says voice VLAN is only supported on access port and not on trunk port, even though the configuration is allowed. So that means even though you configure that port as a trunk port, it's not going to work. It is only going to work on an access port. So let's go back to our diagram and look at how the physical connection works. So this is voice VLAN 100 and this is the data VLAN 101. In the back of your IP phone, there are three ports. One is the access port. That is where you connect your computer or any other data device. And this is the network port that connects to your switch. This is an RS2. 32 port that is for the consoling into your IP phone, but there is an internal port that goes to your phone. So basically there's an internal three port switch inside your phone that is making all these connections. If you look at here in the Cisco documentation, it tells there's a three port switch inside of your IP phone. So this is how the physical connection works when you have to connect a data device that is a computer through your phone. But if you do not have a computer, you can directly connect this phone to your switch and you do not have to configure the data VLAN on the switch port. The reason Cisco implemented this three port switch inside is most of the time people have phones on their desk and they also have their computer. If you want to make two connection for their computer and the phone, you are going to use two ports in a switch and you need two data cable also. So it is going to cost a lot of money to run cable. Also, it is going to consume more ports on your switch. When it comes to a Cisco switch, the average price is about 6,000. So a 48 port makes one port cost to about $125. And you need to refresh this switch every five to six years. So it is a continuous cost. So that is why Cisco implemented this solution. Say you connect your computer to the phone and the phone connects to Cisco switch. Sometimes people need to connect more devices via the Cisco IP phone. Say if you have only one data jack available in a room and you have to connect multiple PCs and printers, you can introduce a workgroup switch. Normally that is not recommended because it causes a single point of failure, but you still can do this. So that means you connect this to your data port and you connect all your devices into this one and then connect your phone to the data jack and to the switch. But all these devices has to be on one VLAN because the workgroup switch does not understand VLAN. So I'm going to do this configuration on a Cisco packet tracer. So if you do not have access to a real switch, this is the best place to practice the configuration. So let's go to our switches and get a switch. Let me get a PoE switch and you need to put the power supplies for the switch to start. Now the switch is starting up. While switching is starting up, I'm going to put an IP phone here and a computer. So now all of these are connected. Let's go to the phone here and you can see in the back of the phone, zoom in and you can see 
this is for the switch connection this is for the pc connection as of now this phone is drawing power from the switch itself let's go to the switch and i am going to show you how that works show power in line and you can see the phone is drawing power from the switch so you do not have to locally power the phone and now we start to configure the the vlans conf t vlan 100 name voice vlan 101 name data and let's see the configuration on port 101 show run int gig 101 this command doesn't work in packet tracer but this will work on a real switch on a packet tracer if you want to see the configuration on a port you have to do show run and you see there is no configuration on any of these ports to configure voice vlan along with the data vlan what you need to do is conf t int gig 101 switch port access vlan that's your data vlan 101 switch port voice vlan 100 and i'm going to show you how the configuration looks like from the switch port perspective show int gig 101 switch port and you can see this port is administratively dynamic order and it is set to static access so that means it is an access port and you can see the voice VLAN is configured on that port. So how the traffic work behind the scene is, the voice VLAN is tagged in between these links. However, your data VLAN go untagged on these links because it's an access port. Because Cisco claims it is an access port, so your voice VLAN get tagged when it reaches the port. And if there is another device on VLAN 101, and then that traffic will be sent to all the ports that are on 101 but it is not tagged on the trunk link so people say this link between your ip phone and the switch is a limited trunk that allows voice vlan tagged and send your data untagged so this is how cisco has implemented the voice vlan in their cisco platform Hope this video is informative to you. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my videos, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification.